Well, guys, it is that time of year again. It is time to talk about my picks for the best films of 2013. I love doing this. This is like the one list each year that I relish doing, and it's very difficult, too. I always have a lot of trial and error. The fall and the winter really saved it this year because up until then, I was like... No. And as usual, every time I make a list, I always mention that this is my list. There's gonna be things you may be like, where's that? Where's this? Chris, what are you doing? Why is that there? I can't believe you didn't put that movie on the... It happens every year. People get up in arms about their favorite film not being in a certain position or whatever, but this is my list and what are you gonna do? Welcome to the World Wide Web, my friend. Also, just like last year, there are gonna be times where you're like, hey, he gave that film an A+, and that film an A-, minus, and that film an A, so why are the order all weird? Because you should have the A-pluses above that, right? There are certain films that I think deserve that grade, but there may be films that I did enjoy more than that one based off of whatever. You know, it's my personal taste, and that's why this is my list. Now, before I get into my top 10, there are some honorable mentions that I feel must be discussed very briefly. The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, The Spectacular Now, Dallas Buyers Club, before Midnight, Side Effects, This Is The End, Star Trek Into Darkness, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, and Captain Phillips. Great, great films. I had a really hard time not putting those in my top 10, but there were 10 other films that I enjoyed even more. Now, starting off at number 10 is an amazing theatrical experience. This is the kind of movie that just sucked me right in there. I was in that world, and for the entire runtime of this movie, I couldn't take my eyes off of gravity. This is a movie with some of the best special effects I have ever seen in my life. 100% realistic. Sometimes when you see a movie that has really good CGI, there's always that one shot where you can kind of tell, yeah, that's fake. This movie does not have that shot. Every shot in this film completely sells the location of space. And Sandra Bullock and George Clooney were great in the movie. I really felt that claustrophobia of her suit. It was just a nonstop thrill ride. A very, very good movie. Coming in at number nine is a film that some critics may have a little bit higher up on their list. I still thought this was an excellent, brutal, harrowing movie that just put you in this space that you didn't want to be in and you began to feel guilty to call yourself a human being. 12 Years a Slave is an extremely intense movie that is very difficult to watch at times, very violent, but at its core, there's such a beautiful human story of this guy's struggle. Steve McQueen's direction was great. All of the cast was fantastic. Everyone in this movie gave top-notch performances. At the core of this movie, despite all of the horrible things you have to watch, there is this great story of human drama, like I mentioned, and 12 Years a Slave is an excellent movie. At number eight is a film that hardly anyone saw, barely anyone ever talks about this movie ever. It was a foreign language film that did come out in some other countries in previous years, but in 2013, the Hunt came out in the United States. So for the United States, it is a 2013 film. This movie stars Mads Mikkelsen and he gives the best performance I've ever seen from him. He plays a teacher who is falsely accused of molesting a child by the child. This child decides to make up this lie and it turns his life, obviously, into a living hell. And you get to see the way people react when this type of thing is spread through gossip and how that gossip can affect a person's life and an entire community when actually nothing even happened. The acting in the film is tremendous. Mads Mikkelsen is completely Oscar worthy in this movie, but it's the type of film you watch and you just, you just want to punch these people in the face, these characters. And the fact that a movie can get under your skin that much when these are actors portraying fictional people, that is something to say. I would strongly suggest seeing The Hunt if you haven't seen it. It is not an easy film to watch. It's not by any means a popcorn film, but it is a very rewarding experience, and I hope you guys check it out. At number seven, we have a film that stars an actor who continues to turn his career around, who's impressing me nonstop these days, Mud with Matthew McConaughey. I really adored this movie, and that's because the perspective of the kid was so mature. And there were really surprising moments of action and drama in this movie that just really took me by surprise. It was such a well-acted movie, too, on McConaughey's part, the kid's part, and Reese Witherspoon's part as well. Nice to see her back in a good movie. I just remember being on the edge of my seat towards the last few minutes of this movie, and it really impressed me, everything about this film. I'm so happy that Matthew McConaughey is doing good stuff again. If you didn't see Mud when it came out, please check that one out. At number six, we have a film that I completely understood. I mean, everything about this movie just hit me, and I completely got it. It was like, yes, that is exactly how relationships are. Don John, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's directorial debut, really impressed me. I knew the guy was talented. I like him in movies. I think he's very funny. He does a lot of good stuff. But the fact that he wrote and directed this movie and stars in it just shows the amount of focus that he actually has in regards to filmmaking. The themes of this movie where it shows how men can view relationships from a very fantastical aspect, but women also can as well. Men through pornography and women through these very outlandish romance novels that will never happen. And I love the way this movie was written and it was all 
also extremely funny. Don John was pretty freaking awesome. At number five, we have one of my favorite director's films, and that is The Wolf of Wall Street, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, directed by the one and only Martin Scorsese. This movie was just hilarious. I mean, a non-stop laugh riot, as I said in my review. Scene to scene to scene, hilarity. And it had such a great way of getting you in the mind of this lead character, Jordan Belfort, played fantastically by Leonardo DiCaprio. Jonah Hill also gives the best performance of his career here. So much of the dialogue was just so damn entertaining that the entire film, even though it was three hours, had me glued to the screen the entire time. At number four, we have the final film in the unofficial Cornetto trilogy, The World's End, directed by Edgar Wright, starring Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. This movie was just a big old geeky time at the movies. Sorry, I just turned into Bill Cosby. I don't know why. Seriously though, this was a nerd's wet dream, this movie. It was so hilarious. I loved Shaun of the Dead. I loved Hot Fuzz. The World's End just might be my favorite one in that trilogy. The way that Edgar Wright directs is just filled with energy, and I love that about his movies, and The World's End was filled with energy from shot to shot. There was never a dull moment in this movie. I found it extremely funny, and also had some really cool action in it. I mean, the bathroom scene? Everyone who saw this movie remembers the bathroom scene. I wish that I could have gone to this movie without knowing the actual plot that eventually surfaces, because the bathroom scene I remember my theater was just erupting. It was fantastic. At number three, we have a film that was also similar to The World's End in that from scene to scene to scene, there was never a dull moment in this movie. This movie was always turned on. It never stopped. American Hustle was a movie directed by David O. Russell with a fantastic cast filled with great performances that really captured its time and era perfectly. The soundtrack was so kick-ass too. And it was just really funny and entertaining, but it had a really great script to it as well, where you could just watch these guys have dialogue and you never got bored by dialogue because each character was saying things that were just so freaking interesting. And I know there was a lot of improvisation on set too, which says a lot for these actors. But the way David O. Russell makes movies is he tries not to create so much of a plot where the film feels locked down. He likes to let his actors play a little bit. And that really shows in this movie because every single one of these actors just feels so free in their role and you can really tell because they're giving performances where you don't see the actor, you just see these guys' characters. American Hustle was entertaining from scene one. It never turned off. I loved it. At number two, we have a film that has stuck with me ever since I saw it. I've seen it again since then on Blu-ray. It's the type of movie that just leaves this feeling of melancholy and dread at the same time after it's over and I couldn't shake it out of my system. The Place Beyond the Pines is the type of movie like that. Now I first saw this in 2012 at the Toronto International Film Festival and I said in my best of the year video in 2012 that I would be talking about it this year and I knew I would, because it came out in March of this year, so it is officially a 2013 release. This movie really dug into me. I mean, these characters just came to life, and it was so shocking, too. I mean, I won't spoil it, just in case you haven't seen it. Guys, do you have any idea how hard it was for me to not tell you some of the things that happened in this movie the first time I saw it? Because when certain things happen in this movie, the audience, you could feel them just get low. Like everyone in the theater was just like, oh my God, that's so shocking. Because no one expected certain things to happen in this movie. But it wasn't just the power of seeing this for the first time amongst a whole bunch of people who had heard no buzz about it. it. You know, there was no trailer for it. There was no promotional images or anything. I just went into this movie being like, what's this gonna be about? It's from the director of Blue Valentine, and it blew me away. Definitely check out The Place Beyond the Pines. It is a very different movie, extremely original. I can't think of another movie out there like it. All right, guys. The number one film of 2013. I have sat through so many films this year, some horrible, some great, but there has been one film that has stuck with me so deeply that I still remember that feeling I had in the theater. I bought the Blu-ray as soon as it came out. This film just hit me on every correct level. Prisoners is my number one film of the year. This movie is the type of movie that some people described as very depressing. The type of film that some people thought was not something they could really watch again. This film was made so incredibly well and shot so phenomenally well by Roger Deakins, my favorite cinematographer. Acted beautifully by Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, Terrence Howard, Viola Davis, Maria Bello, Paul Dano. That the depressing aspect of it actually didn't depress me. I was just so happy to watch someone who knew what the hell they were doing making a movie. Because you know, I watch hundreds of movies every year in the theaters and to see one that just gets everything right for me, where each shot feels so meticulously crafted 
to the end of time. Like you can just tell these guys just sat there setting up every little thing before they shot it. And the actors just went over their roles over and over again because they were so well prepared. It just felt like everyone was on their perfect A game in this movie. And yes, as I said, it is a tough movie to watch. It is not an easy subject matter. It's about a family whose kids disappear and another family whose kids disappear and they're looking for them and they're hunting for them and they're not sure where they are. There were aspects of this film that reminded me of Seven. It had that dreary quality to it, but it was beautiful at the same time because Roger Deakins is a beast. Do you remember when people used to say that? Like, you're a beast? Like, you're really good at something, so you're a beast? No one says that anymore, but Roger Deakins... He's a beast behind the camera. <laughs> Prisoners is a movie that has stuck with me ever since I saw it. I was glued to the screen, completely transfixed for every moment of this movie. Please check it out if you have not seen it. It is my favorite film of 2013. So guys, thank you so much for watching my movie reviews for another year. It really honestly means quite a bit to me that you guys enjoy watching me chit chat about movies because a lot of people are always like, you know, Chris, like, you know, what's up with you, man? I'm just a guy who sits down and talks about movies. I don't think highly of myself, but the fact that anyone out there does seriously means a lot to me. I've gotten so many fantastic messages this year, people saying that I've inspired them to learn about movies or express themselves about film. That just, it makes my life. And you guys are freaking awesome. And I look forward to yet another year in 2014 watching movies with you guys. That being said, my worst of the year picks will be up very soon very different type of video coming there. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.